Hey, welcome to another episode of Consumer Protection and You with Ryan Lippy. Ryan is going to be talking about some of the resources with the State of Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost office. So stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of Consumer Protection and You with Ryan Lippy. Ryan is a consumer educator with the State of Ohio Attorney General's Office, Dave Hughes. Ryan, it's always a pleasure talking. Nice to be with you. Thanks for having me. And today we're going to be looking at the resources. You know, your websites and all the different programs that you have is just chocked full of information. It's just amazing how much you're able to put on the screens. Yeah, and it seems like we're always adding to it. We don't really subtract because the information is very important throughout the year. So we usually add rather than subtract. There are a few features that come and go, but for the most part, we're adding alerts. We're having things that are being value added for the services we provide to the constituents of the state of Ohio. And we are on ohioprotects.org. And as you see, um, part of our big campaign right now is to get people to not answer robocalls, or if they do answer robocalls, to actually report them to our office. But we're going to go down below, and um, I'll take you down this screen at ohioprotects.org. I'm still on the front page. I'm just scrolling my mouse down. And we have lots of information filled with information about robocalls because we're doing a lot of education right now about illegal robocalls, why they look like they're coming from your area, how you can report the illegal robocalls, things like that. But I want to skip down to researching a business because a lot of people don't know that we are a really good resource when it comes to figuring out whether a business is right for you or not. If you're going to be getting some roofing done on your house, if you're going to be getting a new air conditioner, if you're going to be buying a used car, if you're going to be using a travel agent, all those different kinds of things and everything in between, um, we are very much involved in taking complaints against. So if you want to research a business beyond the Better Business Bureau and beyond um, going online and doing a search for the company's name with words like complain or scam or report, you can do um, a lot of inf you can do a lot of searching on our OhioProtects.org website. So if I start a business, does my name act, uh, automatically get into this? No, um, you would need to have complaints against you uh, okay. that would then. So um, the Ohio Secretary of State's office handles business registration. So people can always go to the Ohio Secretary of State's office to find maybe what names a company is using or what company a, a consumer may own and operate. But in terms of our complaints, those usually go to the Ohio Attorney General's office, the Better Business Bureau, folks like that. And so if you are a business that's gotten a complaint, you will be able to see those complaints um, as quickly as it takes to do a search on the web. And you won't get too deep into the complaint till you have to request a public record. And that we can definitely furnish to consumers that want more information about a company and how a particular issue was resolved. But the first thing you want to do is go to learn more at the research a business tab. Now, is this just privately owned businesses or can these be large major corporations? Absolutely. Every, every, every company that we take a complaint against uh, usually ends up here if it goes to the consumer protection section of the Ohio Attorney General's office. So you can do a search by company name, or you can do a search by keyword. So if I put in something like auto repair, which I know will get a lot of um, results because we do take a lot of complaints against auto dealers and auto repair and service stations. If I do a search, I will see in alphabetical order all the company names 
that we at least have one complaint against, maybe more than one. And so if I was going to do a search in uh, on ABC Auto Repair in Canton, Ohio, I would select this company out of all the big list of companies. I've only gotten halfway through the A's. There's pages and pages of companies that use the words auto repair in their name. But um, here's a particular company that has one complaint. And it looks like it was referred probably to the Better Business Bureau or someone like that for poor service and shoddy work back in February of 2021. So if I wanted a copy of the public record that goes along with this complaint, I simply select this box and I request the record electronically. And I just put in all of my information that I need because we will need to be able to contact you to send you the public record that you're requesting about ABC Auto Repair. And so you can get um, whatever complaint information we have on them from the consumer that filed the complaint. We would just redact social security numbers, credit card numbers, things like that before we would furnish you the public record. But it includes a description of the complaint and information about the consumer and most importantly, the company that they're filing the complaint against. In your database, how long do you keep a record? Uh, I think that depends. I mean, a lot of things are kept in our database for several years. So you'll be able to go back several years of time. The, um, the time frame for the Consumer Sales Practices Act is two years in terms of the statute of limitations. But um, in terms of complaints, we can, look, we can look further back than that, I believe. But um, and that's just for our complaints. If you wanted to get um, onto the Better Business Bureau's website for the area of Ohio that you're researching, you may be able to even find a letter grade of how well the company has done its, you know, has, has um, performed and how well it has responded to complaints through the Better Business Bureau. They even give letter grades sometimes. So you'll know whether you're dealing with an A-plus company or a D minus company. So that's, that can be an important uh, telltale sign of someone that um, responds well or responds poorly to consumer complaints. You know, sometimes there's a disagreement about the services we provide as a business and the perception that that customer has. And it's very easy for a customer to file a complaint, whether it's legitimate or not. Absolutely. And if I were to get a complaint, it will be on there for at least two years. What's my recourse? Well, one thing that we provide to consumers is not just the consumer point of view, but you'll be able to determine the company point of view as well. So if you have a rebuttal, um, if you want the full complaint record, we can provide that. The only thing we're going to subtract is social security numbers and other personal identifiable information like uh, credit card numbers, security codes, things like that. So it's really important for, for a consumer doing research to look at the entire complaint file, including what the business has to say as well. Just because there's a complaint against the business doesn't make it a bad business. It may be a very legitimate business, and they may have done hundreds of thousands of transactions and only had a handful of complaints filed with the Ohio Attorney General's office. So as you see on the screen right now, we have OhioAttorneyGeneral.gov, and all I did was click on the name Consumers, and you can see in the middle, Search for Consumer Lawsuits. That's where we've actually filed regarding unfair and deceptive practices against a company. And again, those are allegations. You have to look at how the lawsuit was either found in court or settled. This blue screen here, the blue tab, is search for consumer lawsuits. That's where you can actually search for lawsuits that the Ohio Attorney General's Consumer Protection Section has filed 
regarding unfair and deceptive business practices. So if someone is not just brought to our attention, but we find multiple cases, most likely that they have violated or allegedly violated consumer protection laws, we may go after them through the court process. And if you click on this little blue bar here, you get a letter from Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost, and you have a search tool to search for consumer lawsuits. So if I wanted to click on this tab, I would get another search engine that would then let me, let's say I do the same search, I search auto repair, um, search for a lawsuit against any businesses using the name of auto repair. So I would search there. So then we get an A to Z list of all of the lawsuits that we filed in all the counties of Ohio. There's 88 counties of Ohio in Ohio. And we've got lawsuits that have been filed, uh, possibly settled, possibly gotten judgments against companies in all of these, um, in all these cases. And as you see, there's pages and pages and pages of lawsuits we filed over the last several years. Now you'll see the business name, You'll see any individuals that we filed um, as being associated with that business. You'll see what year and what county they were filed in. Well, then we've got a case number. So you might actually be able to go into the docket or go into the lawsuit that we filed by clicking on that case number. There's a lawsuit filed. In this case, it was in um, Licking County Court. That's where Newark is. And we filed against um, a couple of companies, uh, uh, at least one company and one person individually in terms of violations of certain laws and practices. So you can go and you can see the statement of facts. You can see all the information about what we filed with the court. Now, in this particular case, it looks like it was someone who um, failed to provide a title on time to the consumer. And they have 30 days um, to, to furnish a title as required by the Ohio Revised Code when you buy a motor, motor vehicle, especially a used car. Um, they sometimes don't have the title, so they have 30 days to actually get it to the consumer, which is really the proof you have that you own the car. So getting the title is really, really important. And so this is a this is a case where they didn't furnish allegedly didn't furnish the title on time to the consumer. I, I'm assuming if they're 31 days off and I file a complaint, eventually it will get into a lawsuit. But let's suppose that a business has lost. What are some of the things that that business would then have to do? Uh, first of all, we would ask for restitution to the customers that have been harmed through the dealings of that company. Now, in terms of a title issue, a lot of times we dip into a, a fund that is set up under the law to reimburse consumers that have had title issues that don't get a title on time. It's called the Title Defect Rescission Fund. That's a big name, but what it means is we dip into that fund, then we attempt to collect the money by suing oftentimes the car dealership that failed to provide the title on time. So we go after the money from the dealership. So they would pay directly into the fund to reimburse the fund because the consumer has already been reimbursed for their expenses. Now, in a lot of cases that don't involve title work, we're actually suing maybe a home improvement contractor where we would try to get money back, maybe deposits or payment up front that customers had given to the company that they never did work on behalf of you know, that money. So they would get that money. Consumers would hopefully get money back through our lawsuit. We can also request civil fines against a company in accordance with the variety of laws that we sue under in the Ohio Revised Code. Now, if we, if we obtain an assurance of voluntary compliance, I know that's a, a new term for a lot of consumers, an AVC, 
an assurance of voluntary compliance can be stricken between us and the company. That means that they promise certain things like not violating the law again, maybe not doing any kind of um, business work in that sector. There can be lots of things obtained as an assurance of voluntary compliance. Um, if we don't get an AVC or don't request to have the company enter into an AVC, um, sometimes we obtain a judgment. So we can actually go to, here's, a, here's one in Montgomery County where Dayton is located against Alexander's Auto Sales. You can actually click on view and obtain the judgment that the court rendered in the case, um, presumably in our favor. Um, a judge issued a consent judgment and agreed entry in order with the defendant. So in this case, um, the, uh, there was a consent judgment issued where there were certain things agreed to by the defendant and certain things agreed to by um, the state of Ohio. And we probably have some payments involved from the, uh, from the company to uh, the state of Ohio to reimburse the title defect rescission fund and um, various other matters to resolve complaints that consumers have filed. So that's just an example of what you can get from our um, database of information on lawsuits that we've actually filed against companies and judgments we've, we've been able to obtain on behalf of the state of Ohio. So you see everything from everything from auto dealers to home improvement contractors to uh, maybe travel service companies, all kinds of folks that allegedly have violated consumer laws and rules. I, I would assume that larger corporations, the means to have attorneys and lawyers, um, because let, let's face it, no one is ever perfect. And someone makes a mistake. Sure. And oftentimes it can be the consumer misunderstanding what the, the large company can do. Absolutely. And they would have they would have counsel that can communicate with our office. And, uh, you know, when we do an informal dispute resolution, we're not really a finder of fact like a court would be. We informally try to let the business know the consumer point of view and let the consumer know the business's point of view and try to be that middleman that can help resolve the complaint. When we go to court, that may involve the company having counsel. There may be discussions between our office and counsel for the company. So they get their fair, um, you know, they get their fair point of view into the discussions. So it's not always that the consumer is right and the business is wrong, and it's not always that the business is wrong and the consumer is right. You know, there could be some gray areas. There could be some um, circumstances that simply aren't seen um, equally by the uh, by the complainant, the co the consumer, and the company. Many times you can go online and do reviews, not necessarily find out how many people are satisfied, but what are some of the sat dissatisfactions uh, that that company may have? Right. I mean, there's a couple of caveats that go with that. First of all, you got to remember that some businesses, perhaps illegally even, um, give free products to consumers in return for good reviews, or they post their own good reviews about themselves and post their own bad reviews against their competitors. Huh, That's what, I didn't those, know that. those, those are some tricky business practices, some no. of which aren't, aren't necessarily legal sometimes in certain cases. Uh, for instance, if they give a product to someone to have them test it out and, and, and they uh, give it to them for free, a lot of times they disclose or the consumer discloses that they got the product for free in return for a review. So at least you know what the rules of the game are before you start believing everything you read online. Um, you know, the other issue is, again, as you mentioned, 
just because consumers file complaints doesn't mean the consumer was in the right and the business was in the wrong. So you have to take with a grain of salt um, when you look at a complaint, the fact that it's been filed and you have to look into the substance and how they address the complaint both by a consumer and by a business to figure out whether that business was treating the situation fairly or not. Now, if you wanna to go to our website at ohioprotects.org, we went over the research of business. Now, what if you really do have an issue with a business? You can let others learn about scams. You can let us know and get help from identity theft unit, our identity theft unit, and you can file complaints against the business in hopes that we may be able to help resolve it. So if you click on the learn more, you get our, our basic file a complaint form here. And this would be for a complaint against the business. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily be for a, a, a scam or for an unwanted phone call, but this would be a complaint against the business. Perhaps you thought they had an unfair practice or that you deserve a refund, or they said they were gonna provide products and services and they never did, or they did a shoddy job. So we have all kinds of information that we can get from you involved with getting that complaint set up. In fact, um, if you want to do a complaint over the phone, we can actually um, call. You can call this toll-free number, especially if you don't have internet access. You can go to 800-282-0515 to file your complaint or to get a hard copy of our complaint form mailed to you. The other option is we actually have live chat available. Um, in terms of live chat agents from our constituent services section that can provide basic guidance and assistance. So if you have a specific issue, you can submit it on the form. If you want some general guidance, um, we cannot provide legal advice, but if you want some informal guidance, you can get live help during parts of the day when they are online, you can actually chat in real time with one of our constituent services representatives. So that can even provide you with live um, reaction to maybe a scam that you've um, encountered or a business practice that you've encountered that doesn't seem quite right. Suppose I have a, a complaint that I feel is legitimate. What is your steps? What is the consumer protection uh, organization, what do they do? Well, the important thing to remember is we don't provide legal advice to individual consumers. When we provide legal advice or legal representation, it's the statewide office holders, it's the state agencies. Those are really our clients. Now, the public interest in the entire consumer base is really our interest as well. And that's where you get into our informal dispute resolution process. If you want to get involved in our informal process, um, if you have a complaint against the business, that's where a lot of those are resolved, not using our legal staff, but using our complaint specialists. And if enough consumers report complaints, if enough action is taken against the company to warrant it, we will then go and, and file a lawsuit or go into discussions with the company about potential legal action. But again, that's after more than one complaint. We're not going to go after one individual complaint to address a consumer through our legal system. We're going to go through our informal dispute resolution process um, and then if we get a lot of constituents complaining about a lot of damages and, and unfair business practices, then we may go through civil action on behalf of the entire public and beyond behalf of the state of Ohio. And at the Ohio Attorney General's office, as you see on the screen, we offer many, many services to consumers just within our consumer protection section. You can file a consumer complaint. You can also report an unwanted phone call. We have a special form that um, you can fill out. It takes less than a minute to report an unwanted call. Other things you can do is you can get foreclosure resources, report a scam, request a consumer or a small business presentation. 
And also sign up for our Consumer Advocate e-newsletter. If you have an email address, please sign up for our Consumer Advocate e-newsletter. It's really as simple as going to this screen and inputting your email address and submitting it. You will then be added to our list that we send a newsletter out to every other month. So we really want you to be part of our communication channels and you can have um, a newsletter sent to you every other month by email for absolutely free. Wanna to, want to thank you again for a really informative telecast. Hey, we're talking with Ryan Lippy. Ryan is a consumer educator with the State of Ohio Attorney General's Office, Dave Yost. And uh, again, Ryan, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And if people need more information, we are at ohioprotects.org or ohioattorneygeneral.gov. And if they don't have access to the web, our toll-free number is always 800-282-0515 for the Ohio Attorney General's Office. 